this video, we're going to show you how to take better portraits on your phone. And we'll be using the Vivo X80 Pro to demonstrate. The first thing you want to do is identify what the theme or mood is for your portraits. What do we have for today? So since we're so excited to be back in Chicago for fall, um, we chose Moody Autumn as our theme for today's portraits. We don't just decide on the theme and then just like hope for the best. We are actually really intentional about the colors that we use, the wardrobe that we wear, and the location that we use. Um, so today our wardrobe is going to be what we're wearing right now. Daniel has like a classic fall plaid on. I wear this little outer jacket too. So these, the, the gold and the red will help tie in that autumn theme that we're going for. Okay, and I'm doing a denim jacket because I feel like that is um, like the pinnacle fall outfit. And then um, my- uh, Burnt orange. My beanie is like a burnt orange color, which feels like fall as well. Um, and so for example, um, we wouldn't wear like something that feels like summer. Like I wouldn't wear this pink yoga pants outfit. Yeah, I wouldn't really match the theme at all. And neither would Daniel. And I would not wear that either, you're right. And we also don't want outfits that have like logos or writing or other distracting elements on them. That's why we're like pretty neutral. It's not gonna take away from the portrait. It's just going to- Add re to it. Yeah, it's gonna reinforce the theme. So mm -hmm. that's what we're doing for our outfits. And so again, today our outfits are gonna really add to that fall vibe. Mm -hmm. And then the location that we choose needs to have fall colors in it as well. Um, so let's talk about the location. Yeah, this is pretty easy to do. We're just gonna be outside in like a grassy area with some trees, which depending on where you live, I feel like almost most places in the world have a location like this. So it's pretty accessible. It doesn't have to be anywhere fancy or hard to get to. A lot of people just have a field around that you could shoot in. And I think that the trees with the different color leaves will help tie in to that fall theme. And um, so one other thing we wanna keep in mind is the time of day we're shooting at. We didn't really wanna shoot at high noon, that'll cast Shadows would be really bright and contrasty. It's not really, it wouldn't be good for moody portraits and it's kind of harsh light to be shooting people in. So we waited until later in the day when the sun is lower in the sky. The sun's also more golden at that time and it should provide really nice light for our portraits. So we've got some more tips for you, but we're gonna show you them in action. Let's go. All right, now it's later in the day. The sun's coming in nice and low. And I'm going to shoot Rachel over on this little hill. And there's really nice like golden leaves on these trees behind her, but they're pretty far from the distance. So I'll probably use the telephoto lens on the X80 to compress that background, bring that background closer to Rachel. So it should frame her up really nicely. So the yellow leaves behind Rachel, who's wearing blue, blue and yellow are complementary colors. So it should look really cool. Let's try it out. You good up there? You sketchy? Yeah, try sitting. There's some uh, orange, there's some uh, like red leaves behind here. Let's see if we can get some of these. There we go. Okay, go ahead and look at me. Yeah, do the arm, I like the arm there. Okay, now I'm gonna try some just with uh, the, the standard lens, not the telephoto. And I might choose some interesting angles, like I might shoot up at her just to get some more unique uh, looks instead of just doing the straight on standard portrait. We like to do things a little bit different. So I'm gonna try some different things and see what looks good. Standard, yeah. So another thing you need to decide is whether to shoot vertical or horizontal. Usually the most standard thing for portraits is vertical. It's often why they call it portrait and landscape orientations. Um, so I'm gonna shoot a little bit of both just so you can see. And uh, usually with people, you'll find that vertical will get most of their body, which is usually what you want. But horizontal could be really nice as well to encapsulate the whole environment they're in and showcase that. So we'll do a little bit of both. Yeah. Yeah, I like those. Mm -hmm. Okay, so right now, um, it's a little bit before um, golden hour. So we have this nice, gold light coming in and creating this beautiful hair light around Daniel's sweet man bun. And um, so we have nice light from the front on him that's nice and even. 
And then on the back, we have the beautiful light that helps separate him from the background. Um, and so while that's not super moody, um, we're gonna capture the moodiness in his posture, his pose, his, the colors that he's wearing, and then like the um, sort of moody forest behind him. Um, so yeah, let's, let's get at it. Can you look down with your eyes? Gorgeous. Okay, um, so I was doing some wide angles. Can I get you to go um, more in this light back over here? Kind of framed by the opening of the forest. That's gorgeous. It's gorgeous. Yeah, there's a lot of farther away ones. One last tip, um, when you're dealing with light, especially on a budget, um, if you don't have your own external lights and maybe natural light isn't going your way perfectly, like right now, um, the sun is behind us. So while Daniel has this like even light on his face, it's kind of flat. Um, so what you can do is reflect light onto your subject with any sort of white board. Be a reflector. You can get a reflector for like 20 bucks or if you um, just buy a lot of packages like we do. Probably have some of these around your house. But yeah, so we're not going to use this today because we're doing moody portraits and this is really lightening it up, but just a little pro tip for shooting some light. at home on a budget. So we chose this spot because not only does it have that foresty feel that our last spot had, um, but it sort of has this like framed archway that will help frame your subject. Um, We've got Daniel with the hood up to um, add to the moodiness of the shot. And um, just like a little full disclosure, we're not models, so don't judge us on our modeling skills. So maybe take that hand and go uh, at your hair, yeah. I'm gonna place Daniel's eyes on the horizontal third on the top here. Oh, there we go. Just gonna pop you out. Good point. I'm creating some space from my subject as well. Putting his eyes on this top third line. Putting Daniel in focus. And woo! Check out that bouquet. Yeah. <laughs> like walking into it. Let me try to shoot up and get like... So sometimes even when the sun's starting to set, you can have like some hard lines, you can have shadowed areas and light areas. Sometimes it's easy just to pull the subject into an area that's all shaded. So you have nice even light across their face. And if you can spin it, it's nice if you can get the sun to come in with some hair light behind them as well. Then you have a pretty good combination of even light on their face, but nice dimension with light behind them. I kind of want to see if I get some... So your little backlit, let me see if I can... I'm talking about it, I Okay, let's try something. Go. Shot like 20 photos. I'm gonna try another portrait mode with this like cool textured light behind you. So stuff like right here. Just a minute. I think that's pretty nice. So when you're working with your subject, trying to find the best light, sometimes it helps just to extend your hand in front of you and do 360 degrees around yourself, watching how the light hits your hand, how the shadows look on your hand, and that can just help you find the best angle to shoot at, where to place your subject, etc.
So yeah, nice even light with nice right there. Now you can see here, it looks like it'd be backlit because I see light on the back side of my hand. And it's pretty dark in the front of my hand. So just hold out your hand. I just want to try this angle with this light on you. Oh, that's cool. Okay, let me try pro mode on that. I didn't shoot it yet, just so you know. Just trying to get the lighting right. Uh, come back, actually. Oh, your glasses, I can see. Okay. All right. All right, we'll come back at dusk and take some more photos then. Now that the sun has set, it becomes a little trickier to take photos, but it's still totally doable with the Vivo X80. First, you can find ambient light. Town centers with buildings, street lights, and signs can all provide ambient light, or even the headlights from a vehicle. Here, I'm placing the X80 on a tripod so I can use a slower shutter speed to capture more light. If Rachel holds her pose really still, we should get some really fun shots. Here, my shutter is 1 10th of a second, so using the tripod helps keep the photos sharp. The headlights help pop Rachel out from the background and light the foreground. Another technique you can do for night portraits is light painting. Usually it takes some trial and error to find the right settings for light painting, but I'll just switch into light painting mode on the Vivo X80 and it'll do it for me. You're gonna feel a little goofy running around the frame, but hey, the results are pretty stunning. Try different patterns, different colors, etc. This is where you can have fun with it. Now my yellow jacket is showing up as the blur behind the light streak, so you may want to wear black clothing so you don't show up as much on camera, but I don't really mind it. These were a lot of fun to make, and the results are really cool. <laughs>